In this video, I'm going to tell you about the built-in research tool. And I always tell people in my face-to-face -face trainings that they're going to cry when they find out how much time they could have saved when they were um, students. So here I have a one-page document. And I only have one sentence on it. It's a statement. It's an assertion that it's a good idea to create train your dog. So let's say that I need to have some research to back that up. I'm going to highlight Create Train Your Dogs, and I'm going to go up to Tools, and I'm going to choose Research. And what happens over on the right side of the screen is I get this research panel. And in the box, these are my search terms. If I wanted to change those, I could type in something else. And then right below it are my search results. Maybe I knew when I was working on this paper that I wanted to link back to the ASPCA site. I could just tell from this description and this web address that this is what I wanted and I could just click on the insert link button and I'll get a link that's going to take me to the ASPCA site. So I'm going to hit undo. So my link is gone. Let's say though that this is my first time and, I, and I've heard that it's a good idea to create train your dogs, but I really need to research that and find some evidence. So I'm not going to be able to get that just from these short search result descriptions. So what I'm going to need to do is when I hover over my mouse, I want to take a deeper look at these sites. So I'm going to stay here with the ASPCA and notice I have a preview button. I'm going to click on that and I get a pop out window to the side. Now, obviously, like that's super small. I can't read it from here, but it's enough information for me to tell me whether or not I want to go check out this site or if I want to close this window. Notice there's this little tiny triangle here. I'm going to push it back in and look down on another option. So I just hovered over the second search result. And if I click preview, this window will pop open. And if I want to go to any of these, all I have to do is click the link and a new window is going to open. Okay, so I'm going to close that and I'm going to close this. And so let's assume now that I have checked out the site. And yes, this is the site that I want to use. And what I need to do now is cite my source. So I still have my terms highlighted. Watch what happens if I click cite gives me a little footnote and if I scroll down on my page down at the bottom it automatically drops in the footnote and it puts in all of the information that needs to be there super cool right and if let's say I start adding in more if I come here and maybe I want to do the Humane Society as an option. If I hit site, it's automatically going to adjust things down here. And even if I, I just copied that, delete, and I pasted more information to the front, it adjusted my numbering down here and up here. So that all happens automatically. So that's all pretty cool, but let me show you something that's even cooler. When this stuff is getting put into your page, it's being put in as MLA. Let's say for some reason you need to change that. This is the one that blew my mind. Okay, right below the search box, there's another little triangle. If you click the triangle, there's an option there that says use this citation format. And notice it's set to MLA. So I'm going to choose APA, and if I insert another important fact that has to have research supporting it, um, let's say that I want to, I'll use Cesar's way, and I'll cite that. It's going to put my new footnote in as APA style. So what it won't do is change things that you already have inserted. So you need to know what style you want to use ahead of time. To close this window, there's a bottom arrow to push things up. And you can also close out the side panel by hitting the X up in the top bar where it says research. And you're done. That's the research tool.